In this video, I'm going to be building a condenser used to distill water. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm tired of having to buy distilled water out of plastic jugs. Um, I no longer drink tap water. Tap water in America is basically full of poison. It's full of things like fluoride and lead and all this stuff like this. And not to mention the fact that today's water sources are now heavily contaminated with medications that a lot of people are on. You know, they don't tell you this kind of stuff. And a lot of people think it's just some big conspiracy and all this and that. But I happen to know for a fact that uh, the water in the Illinois area is some pretty nasty stuff. And just the fact that they put fluoride in my water without asking me, you know, I just don't want nothing to do with it anymore. So I'm going to be building a condenser that can handle a fairly large um, boiler. I'm not sure what I'm going to use for a boiler yet, but it's probably going to be something that about as big as one of these containers here. Because um, I want to make, you know, several gallons at a time. Now, after I build this condenser, I am going to test it. And we're going to see how much steam it can actually take. Um, these are the the three tubes that I'm going to use and here are my some of my manifold end caps and reducers you're looking at about ninety dollars worth of materials with just this stuff right here that's ninety bucks complete ripoff I accidentally bought these I don't think I'm even gonna need them based on the design of this unit um, other than that, I probably should have been a little more thorough in my list, but um, yeah, this ought to be a pretty powerful little unit. We'll see how it looks when I'm done. The way this thing is designed is, I've got some tubing here that represents the interior construction of this thing. You have cold water passing through this copper 1 8 inch tube here, and you have steam passing in between this void. On the outside of this pipe, you have water flowing again inside of this void here. That's this chamber right here. There was water, that's the discharge for the cooling water there. And in this cavity here, you again have steam. So that way your, your water is doing work on both sides of condensing. And this thing is also set up in a co-flow configuration where the coldest water enters first. That ensures the maximum amount of condensation that way. Rather than hooking it up in counterflow, counterflow makes your condensate come out a lot cooler. But you waste a lot of your cooling energy by cooling down the condensate rather than condensing steam. So be on the lookout for that anytime you go to hook up a condenser and efficiency is of any importance. You need to remember to hook it up in a co-flow configuration that exposes the steam to the coldest portion of the condenser. Otherwise, when you do it in the opposite direction, as I said, you're only cooling down your condensate to temperatures that are far cooler than what are necessary. Okay, so I'm just trying to purge this condenser out. I'm just going to run it straight steam. I'm not going to put any coolant on it because I, I want the water to run through here at an extremely high temperature, as hot as I can get it, to kind of flush out any flux because as I said this is going to be used to distill drinking water. Just to give a visual of how much steam is actually coming out of this thing, I'm going to show you. actually quite a bit of steam it doesn't look like it but that's how much steam that little bit of water was backing down in that condenser so it's uh, doing pretty good we are cranking a little bit of steam there that's getting too hot to hold even in a glove. 
I don't know. That water looks a little nasty to me. I don't think I'd drink that. Maybe it's just because it's still hot. We'll see. Okay, I have a little bottle here with some water running some fluid for the condenser. And you can see it has completely overpowered the steam that's being generated from that thing. Just now starting to put off some water. It's probably going to pulsate like I said. I gotta hold this up in the air and produce pressure. But now we'll watch what happens as it runs out of fluid. And see there's no steam whatsoever. This is a pretty powerful condenser for its size. Okay, we're out of water. And now this thing here is gonna come alive probably quite a bit of fluid in that condenser it's still charging up yeah it's getting really hot now here it comes it's heating back up it's gonna start boiling water See that there? That's fluid flow caused by water boiling inside of the condenser coolant cavities. It'll really start going here in a second. being boiled inside the coolant cavities. You can see the steam condensation from it. I don't know, this fluid looks a little bit cleaner than when I had that vinyl tubing hooked up. Like the worst angle ever here. The purpose of this is to eventually make something you can drink, so no pulp allowed. Okay, I want to show you guys what happens when you run fluid through the condenser during the purge, or in any case, I'm going to lift this bottle up. all that water back into the condenser from the vacuum that's caused. I'm squirt it all right back in there now. That's how much vacuum this condenser can, can muster. I'll do it one more time. I don't know if you can see that over there. this amount of water cooling that off and do that I don't think we get a very good shot of that definitely a lot of steam production 
going to run one more tank of water through this thing, and we consider that pretty close to being cleaned out. Or I'm going to start running it with coolant through the condenser. I can try to run it this way this time, so more steam might get condensed by the water, but I don't know how that's going to work out. Now that I spray painted this condenser, the camera's picking it up a little better. Before it wasn't doing a very good job. It just didn't like looking at copper. For instance, this line right here wasn't even showing up in the thermal camera until I painted it. This one was, but it's made out of a plastic. I'm also going to get some footage of this thing running with coolant running through it. I don't have coolant running through this condenser right now because I'm still flushing it out. I keep getting some really dirty water over here. So as soon as my water starts coming out nice and clean. Wow, I can see steam. So that's kind of cool. I was wondering if it would pick up steam or not. Definitely pretty awesome. This is the Fleur One camera, by the way. Things show them were about 230 degrees there. Greater than 248. I guess that's as high as this camera goes. It's 248 degrees. water definitely looks cleaner this time around but yeah that's with the condenser spray painted versus it not being spray painted for whatever reason this camera just cannot pick up heat signature from the recessivity or whatever it's called of copper certain materials are kind of hard for thermal imaging devices to pick up on 